already, and then it just kind of goes. Too many things in my brain. Keep it in
moving the minutes from 8 to 16 yeah. um, Jumping right into citizen comments. Citizen? Yes. Uh, is it fine if I sit? I don't know what the protocol is before the board. Uh, we do need you to state your name and sure. where you're from, which okay. town. That's all. You're about and scoot up. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Uh, my name is Jeff Eugino, U-G-I-N-O. Um, eight Wildflower Lane in Jackson. I have uh, two children. I have one in the second grade here and one freshman at Kennett. Uh, I just, um, unfortunately, I'd like to speak to the board tonight about masks. I apologize for that, um, but particularly outdoor mask protocols at JGS. Um, this is not a political issue for me whatsoever. I regret the politics ever gets involved here. Uh, I just think that we need to look at if we're going to impose full-time outdoor masking, again, we're talking about outdoor masking uh, at the school, that it be grounded in the Jackson School, that it be grounded in guidance uh, from technical authorities that are charged with providing it. Um, as I understand and observe, and I've been in conversation with Ms. D, um, JGS students generally must wear masks full-time, outdoors, including recess, PE, and outdoor classroom time with the exception of um, lunch and, and uh, limited mass breaks, of course. Um, what concerns me is there appears to be no authority to support the policy. As I understand the SAU 9 reentry plan, um, this practice comports with the red operating uh, conditions, which state masks should be worn at all times, um, which is the same as the Jackson plan and the sub plan. Um, but of course, we are in yellow. Um, the policy, which states masking decision is based on current indicators and state and federal guidance. Um, as to local indicators, I'm not sure exactly what the metric the district is using, um, but I will note as of this morning on the state's coronavirus dashboard of the six hospitals that make up the North Country um, Hospital Group, on the dashboard is only one person out in all those six hospitals is hospitalized with COVID 19. I think this is a testament to the vaccination rate in the community, which has been great. I think Jackson is number one in the state in terms of vaccination. Um, it's, but some of the success uh, should trickle down to the kids. Um, as to the state, its guidance as is typical is very hands off, um, local control. There's not much there. There's a, there's a decision matrix, which is of, of little help. Um, but again, the SAU 9 policy says you have to state the federal guidance. Um, and here is where the federal government comes in, comes in. And it, as it should, it has the level of resources, has the funding through the CDC. And uh, as I look at the CDC guidance, there's a document easily searchable on the web. It says guidance for COVID-19 prevention in K-12 schools. It has a specific section for recess and physical education, which says People do not need to wear masks when outdoors, e.g. participating in outdoor play, recess, and physical education activities. Um, in this sense, the federal guidance is clear here. It's the only clear guidance out there, um, if, if you take a look. Um, I just think that requiring kids to wear masks outside, only talking about outside here, um, it should be based on something grounded in evidence. Um, the fact that the kids may not complain about it anymore is not an evidence-based reason to maintain the restriction or maintain the, the imposition of the, of the um, which really, it, it's an intervention in a sense. And the fact that the staff, you know, which I fully commend the staff at the school, I fully commend the superintendent, what everyone's done to keep these kids in class full time for the last year plus, testament to all of you. But in this sense, the fact that the staff may be more comfortable with it is not, a, is not an evidence-based reason for this restriction. Um, I just think when you look at it, the burden should be placed on the proponents of a new intrusive intervention to justify it and not the other way around. It should go back to the CDC guidance. And I just ask that the board consider, and this deep consider, that um, given that we're in yellow, that we, we follow yellow and not Red, which essentially the following red. Um, the kids should have some trickle down for the reward of vaccinations. We should follow CDC guidance. It is, is 
very clear that outdoors is of such minimal risk they give them a blanket green light to outdoor play, recess, phys ed, straight, straight from the K-12 curtain guidance there. Um, I just asked, I know there's some, some nervousness, there's some, you know, um, you know, some gray areas here, but I just don't think there's a gray area when it comes to outdoor play. Um, perhaps there's an exception if someone's, they're grouped together closely for an outdoor assembly or something like that, but that, again, that's not what the guidance says. Um, I just ask, ask you to consider this. Um, six and a half hours is a long day for a kid in a math, because every, everyone does it. I, you know, um, I just ask you to consider that this is, it's a bright line that we can follow that, that allows them some breaks. And uh, I just appreciate your time tonight to consider that. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate your, <coughs> your comments, so thank you. Uh, we're not going to address them right now, but thank you. I, I would just say, as far as the authorization is concerned, mm -hmm. um, you know, it is up to local school boards to, to be the final say. You know, so we are the authority that does you know, say that, um, what happens. And um, the, to the extent that, that we want to get involved in that, you know, the board made the decision at our last meeting that um, where we really want to be involved is if it was determined that we should go from yellow back to green um, is when we would be notified to make that decision. Um, and as far as everything that also happened, because we were yellow at the time, I believe we're still yellow, Kevin. Um, and yeah, the decision is going to be based on what the school feels is, is the best. So um, I do appreciate you coming to here to, to address that, but um, that's where the authority comes from anyway. It comes from us, and, and that's where we okay. stood. So. I just asked him. Yeah. The board defer to the experts on this one and that's the CDC. If, if we were to address more, we would have to address it at a, at a public meeting. We're not prepared to address it this okay. evening. Absolutely. I appreciate, so, I appreciate that. Yep. Um, you know, it's something that we can discuss between now and our next meeting and address it that way. Understood. And I appreciate everything the board does and the time you take out of your own time. I just wanted you to understand that the process, I guess, that, that brought us to it. And if we were to change that, mm -hmm. we'd, have to, we'd have to address it before we're not prepared to this evening. So. Understood. Thank you. Uh, presentation school yeah. Hank, did you want to? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Um, yeah. I'm actually um, launching an uh, internet TV channel for the uh, town of Jackson, New Hampshire. Uh -huh. And I was wondering if I could put the school board. I didn't, well, I haven't figured out the domain name yet. Um, but uh, once I get the domain up and running, I was wondering if I could put the school board content that's on jacksonpost.com on the uh, internet TV channel. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think that would be up to us. I don't, I mean, that would be up to you. And I was support you doing it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I think it would be a good thing to do that. Um, yeah. you, you actually probably don't need our permission to do that, but it's, okay. probably, it's probably better to get it. But, yeah. uh, but I think that would be a great thing to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That would be a good thing to do. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, presentation of school programs? Nothing under this part, and I'll address it. Okay. Gets five, four, five. Yeah. No second. Okay. Uh, the tuition contract, I believe we have a meeting on the 23rd. 23rd at 4 o'clock, the Cooperative Planning Committee. It is open to the public, but you do have, uh, I believe, Darlene and Jim. Mm -hmm. Is it you? No, Jess Bellavella. Yeah. And Sasha. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to get started on that. Yeah. Instructional issues? No. Uh, All right, good. Consider personnel actions, 7A. Confirm election of Cynthia Hoyt as paraprofessional 50% position. We're good? We need a motion. Make a motion to do so. Okay, second. Thank you. All those in favor? All right, confirm transfer of Joan Heisler to special education teacher position. Motion. Second. All right. All those in favor? I can't see my fingers. Confirm election of Delaney Kennedy as elementary teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay. FYI, inactive positions. So, 
we will be, due to the changes in Title IX allocations for Jackson, the Title I-8 position 12 to 15 hours per week is being inactivated, effective September 21st, 2021. Anybody have any motion? All right, we're good with this. Everybody, anybody have any questions? No. Okay. All right, do we have an add on? There is. There's a, a walk in for going to personnel 7E. Yeah. And Gail can talk <laughs> about it later on, but so it's up to you. You can either, this is for the middle school soccer. Yeah. Middle school fund? Not the middle I school. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. No. Modified, Modified soccer. soccer program. This is great. Hampton didn't know when she was. <laughs> she didn't. She's <laughs> beginning to get an inkling of what that entails. But yeah. I think it's wonderful. I, um, I did ping Nancy today to see what um, Bartlett paid for stipend, but that's inconsequential at this moment. So we'll see. But, um, well, we've, we've had this opposition before. No, do we have it? We probably didn't have it last year, but we had it. No, but we've had it every year before that. And in it's, in it's the same as the SSC and Nordic. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But we have had this opposition in, in the yes. past. Yes, market for a long time. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll make a motion to um, nominate um, Hampton Senate for the uh, modified soccer program. Second. All those in favor? Um, okay, business affairs. Uh, budget status report. Any questions on the budget? budget? No? Good. Summary of your expenses and receipts. Yep, so in your packet um, is an FYI, if you don't mind. Uh, yep, okay. Go okay. no, over a few things with you folks. So the end of the year reports are here. Um, and you can see it's, it's in here. The Jackson School District, the fund balance at the end of the year is $144,296. You can see some of the savings there, um, you know, personnel pieces, some benefits pieces, uh, summer programming, some transportation savings there. But that's, that's relatively consistent with, with what you typically would have at the end of the year. On the following page is the um, revenue sources. So we always do a projected revenue and then we take a look at it, but you'll see um, you know, some, of the, some of the additions for the revenue. And then, uh, yeah, the Whitney Center uh, was, was a big one. And then you see the Bainman's Trust Fund. So, that is the summary of the end of the year fund balance. I don't know if you have any questions on that. You'll see the lunch deficit does cost you uh, some money. And you'll see it's about $13,000 after you get reimbursed from all the federal meals. And then you get to item D, which is mm -hmm. you can choose to retain. Okay, so we're considering retaining fund balance from 6-20-21. So somebody will have to make a motion right. to even entertain the conversation, and you can decide whether you want or not. Uh, to make a motion to discuss the uh, retaining fund balance from last year. Second. Um, what did we? What is? What did we retain from last year? Was it? Uh, don't uh, maybe I can find it here. Oh, you retained fifty thousand dollars last year, and twenty five of it, I believe, was to um, kind of offset the appropriation for what we're adding to the special ed fund. But the only reason I bring that up is because I, I would like to at least give back. If we retained fifty thousand last year, I think that we should give back twenty five thousand of that. It doesn't mean that we wouldn't have a sort of reason to retain more from the 144 that we, that we wasn't spent in this year. But, um, it's fundable, I understand that, but just from a principal standpoint, um, you know, um, I think that we should consider we So we've retained 50,000 last year. Um, we can retain up to 62 um, 
to just for the starting point in my mind, I'd be thinking that we'd be talking about twenty-five thousand dollars that was kind of in there, um, building on on top of that to the sixty-two. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so subtract twenty-five. Well, um, it wouldn't be subtracting twenty-five from anything in reality. It's right. just that you know if we had fifty thousand dollars in there that we retained. Twenty-five of that was to offset the money that we, the extra money that we put into, mm -hmm. so we'd be giving that back at least, which means we'd be talking about what, what above twenty-five thousand dollars we want to retain for for this year. So it's twenty-five dollars still. Twenty-five. Well, we have fifty in there, which yeah. isn't a bad thing to leave in there. I guess mm -hmm. when we started that, we had left in twenty-five, to kind of just as a, as a starting point to have in case something happened. Um, we left in another 20, we put in an additional 25 last year to offset that. So for discussion purposes, I would think we'd start at 25 as a base mm -hmm. and go from there. Um, whether we wanted to retain less than 25 or more than 25, um, it's, it's, it's kind of a moot point. I mean, it's a, it's, it doesn't mean a whole lot in reality, but as far as where we're at, I mean, um, and personally, I would like to continue to put more money into that um, special ed fund. Um, I think especially given what we've already seen with the you know increased need for it to continue to make sure that we're planning for it makes a lot of sense. And, and how it works is basically so we can't affect the tax rate necessarily directly except for kind of right now. Mm -hmm. um, so like if whatever we do, whatever we don't give back and retain would be in my mind kind of what we give back next year. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so you know, I, I personally I think that Going back to fifty thousand dollars would be a good number to leave in there, yeah. um, because again, when we get here next year, I can say again that they were giving twenty-five thousand dollars back to the the tax rate to cover what we appropriated for um, putting the extra money into the, the, the special the special fund. Okay. So in March, it looks like on the warrant, it's, we're just appropriating from taxes yeah. right. twenty-five thousand dollars more. When we get to this time of year, it's kind of when we're sort of getting it back. I <laughs> hope we retain twenty-five thousand dollars more. It isn't in reality, yeah. but uh, we don't know in June what we're going to have left over for the year. This year we have 144 and change left over. Um, I'm comfortable with the 50. I think that that sounds, yeah. like there's, you know, like following last year's logic of that being the right number. And, yeah. So that would look like it, it when we put together the number for the um, trust fund for the, um, or cap, is it capital reserve fund or trust fund? Maybe it, 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 trust fund. it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. But so for the trust fund for the special ed, um, you know, whatever we would more ordinarily put in there, I would think we would put in an additional $25,000 yeah. to, to keep building that account up. And mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll get a whack out of it. But. So I would make a motion to retain $50,000 from the, um, to retain from last this year. For I second that. Second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Can they talk to you? Just, uh, yeah, just a, yeah. a quick, because it is a very confusing piece, right? And I just want for the public. Yeah. Jerry yeah. knows this because you, you mean I didn't clarify? You <laughs> did. You did a fine <laughs> job. And I followed you all the way through. So it's really the same thing, but there there are rules around this sum of money that, that you can only use it for emergencies, right? Thank goodness in in Jackson, since I've been here, you haven't had to tap into that, but if a compressor breaks down in, or, or the heating system or a boiler or something like that, you can use that with approval from the selectmen and the Department of Revenue Administration. With that being said, it does count, as Jerry was very clear, as revenue in the following year. So um, he's right. You can either use it to pay it forward now or it'll be in the future. So uh, that $50,000, is a solid number. And, and the, reason I, the reason I characterize it that way is because there's not a lot that we can actually spend that money on. Right. Um, and if a boiler goes, we have capital reserve accounts for that type of thing that we're well covered on. So we don't really need to use it for that type of thing because we have coverage for that sort of thing. I think we've got $85,000 in our uh, maintenance trust fund so that if something goes wrong, we can cover what goes wrong in our current budget. Um, so I don't look at it as a way to cover the fiscal year's budget as much as I look at it as trying to affect the tax rate in an intelligent way. I guess is the best way to say it, is to, is to positively affect the tax rate in a way that makes sense. So. 
Can you vote? Excellent job. I think we did. But all these are in favor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cross my teeth. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we sign the report. We're good with that. So the two reports that you'll have is what's called the MS-25 and the DOE-25. They're two different documents. These are what are used. It's a big process that, that the, the finance department goes through. Everybody in the state has to fill these out. This gets sent to the Department of Revenue Administration to set the tax rate for this upcoming year. So you do have uh, those documents that you, you folks sign, but those, that's what those are for. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. On those forms? Or no, no my right ahead. Yes. Oh yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> appreciate it, Mr. Eugenio. Very respectful. I appreciate that. Um, so yes, we are still in red, uh, yellow. Excuse me. Uh, and um, as, as you folks have seen, we're watching the numbers everywhere. Jackson, knock on wood. I think echoing what was said earlier, the, the vaccination rate. Right, you folks are doing um, everything here. I know Gail will talk a little bit about some of the things that are going on in. in the buildings. Um, the good news is there's a little bit more freedom this year to do some of the things that we weren't able to do in previous years. Uh, so, so there are adjustments that are being made all over the place. Uh, and uh, you know, you can see districts that weren't as proactive moving forward, and they're paying for it now, I guess, or it's spreading. Um, the if you if the SEU nine website is active and it's updated every day. What we are finding is, is that there are a number of cases that are not being spread in the school, which is knock on what a good thing. But what we're finding is, is that when one member in the family is getting positive, it's hitting two or three siblings and family members in there. So all the more reason for um, people to continue to take it seriously and keep the kids home. And thank you for doing that when they have symptoms getting the tests that are, that are being done. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, you know, taking advantage of the, the, the good weather and, and getting folks outside. Um, I know that there is concern, and, and I'm not sure what the case is here, but when kids are clustered together, you know, obviously that's, that's something that we're, we're aware of, is that different schools, and they were doing, I don't know, the spider web thing at one of the schools where they hand over hand and they're, they're going to different places. So I know that that does weigh into some of the decision making. Um, field trips are, are up and about. I don't know if you have any plan, but we're trying to get the kids to the different places. Obviously, uh, we're looking at where they're going and what they're doing, but uh, the outdoor field trips are, are awesome and we want to do that. Uh, I'm going to turn over to Pam in just a second, but before we do that, uh, our finance office has undergone some, some significant changes. Uh, I think we're in process. We almost have all the pieces to, in play. Uh, Becky Jefferson has come back out of retirement. I know, Jerry. <laughs> but those DOE 25s and the 25s. I knew there was a reason that Becky's my favorite person on the planet. She, uh, <laughs> no, out of the goodness of her heart, she's so loyal that, you know, reached out and she's been working on, you know, a lot of hours on, on the weekends and, and trying to uh, where if we were to pay different accountants to come in it would be extremely expensive so uh, thanks for your continued support on that but I'm going to defer to Pam just for a minute to talk about um, some opportunities. So um, the SAS screening surveillance screening you guys have probably heard about it I talked a little bit about it at the um, SAU 9 meeting it's a, an initiative from New Hampshire Public Health with the Department of Ed right now, the Safer at School Screening. It gives us another mitigation tool that we can use, gives parents a tool that they can use. Um, it's a free, although it is paid for by federal monies, um, so it's not completely free, um, initiative that's completely voluntary. Um, so the makeup of the program um, you have to enroll to even start having conversations. So we have enrolled all of our districts. That does not mean we have to access the program. Um, by enrolling, we were able to choose a partner. So we've identified University of New Hampshire. Um, they've had a lot of experience at UNH doing their testing and screening there. And their lab is um, supervised by the same person um, 
who supervises the state lab. Um, so I thought that was a really nice piece. Um, and we also um, are partnering through them with Stewart's Ambulance Service. They would come up and do any testing that we needed. The gist of it is we would schedule regular testing for anyone who's um, an employee who consents or a parent of a child who consents. So you have to consent in order to be a part of this testing. Um, UNH is the only partner that is doing it at, um, that's not doing cold testing. So these are individual PCR tests where results come back within 24 hours to the family about results. The goal is to be able to identify any asymptomatic carriers who may be shedding the virus, therefore infecting others, so that we can get them to a healthy place, keep our schools open face to face. Um, there are a lot of benefits. There are some drawbacks. Um, we have a great, you know, small community here, so we have a really nice setup we can do. Gail and I um, met with the Stewart's Ambulance Service gentleman last Monday. Um, seems like forever ago. Um, but we feel like we could do it very quickly. The first couple times they do the testing with children in elementary school, it takes about five minutes a child. After that, it's two to three minutes. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, it's just a great option. It's a great tool for us to have. Um, but the School Nurse Association is supporting, public health supporting, and um, our school nurses are supporting as well. I believe that's the program. Tamarnook is running that, which is where my twins are. So they, uh, Melissa stepped in. She was one of the first uh, schools. I think help like younger schools in New Hampshire to get set up for it. So they've been running it super successfully. Tomorrow will be the fourth week. Yeah, it's quite fast and the kid, it doesn't hurt, which is a big selling point to kids who've gone to Memorial and mm -hmm. had the brain swap. So, you know, it's been going really well with three to five year olds. So that's the problems for uh, the older kids. So just, you know, like we did something like this and we had however many people consent to do it. Would we review and would be more lenient with our outdoor masking because we're doing this extra testing? It could be a tool that you use. That's an excellent question. I haven't thought about that. I look at it as another kind of touch point for Gail, the teachers, you all as school board members to use to see where you are here in Jackson at the time. But if it gives, for speaking for myself as a school board, if it gave me a more timely snapshot of the school that it was healthy, you know, I would say it would be app to review the, it, definitely the outdoor mask wearing. Okay. Just thinking of uh, new information. I think that's probably you know, a smart thing to pursue. But one of the things I was going to recommend maybe is that if you have a conversation with Gail mm -hmm. about the outdoor masking, okay. then get back to, I'm sorry, I didn't. Jeff, you, Gina. Yep, yep, thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, about that conversation. I don't think it's, you know, yeah. it's, you know, we have a small community here. The board's not really well in touch with all the parents and, and the families that are here, but certainly Gail and the staff is, so I think that that conversation is probably healthier to take place kind of outside of this and, yeah. um, you know, have a good conversation with Gail about it, see where it goes, and if you get back to him, that would be good. And then, um, if you think that we should need to address it at the board level, then we should address it at the next meeting. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. 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 yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I I mean, I appreciate your point, Jen, about the, the other data point, um, so that we can, you know, if it's something that we think enough of, I mean, I bet people would opt into that, right? Like, we opted into it for our kids, because it gives our family information when we go see our mother-in-law. So I bet there'd be enough people in Jackson that would opt into it that would give us an interesting baseline. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You know the information on this? Sorry? Do you have the information on Or do you have the information okay. on it? If we wanted to do you forward. Do you want to tell me to do that? I've been told not to. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would be interested in supporting the school, if that, Gail, if that's so what Gail, you want to we'll, we'll talk about it. And then get back to Pam. Right. To me, yeah. it seemed the night that you presented that, you know, I mean, to me, it wasn't even something I would have thought twice about. Yeah. But the way you described it seems to me as a benefit, low cost to the school board. Um, just another piece of information. 
And it is optional by consent only. It's, exactly. it's by consent. It's not something that someone would have to. But, um. Yeah, how do you feel about it? Or how does, like, like I mean, just, you know, or like the burden on the school, the logistics, you know? I mean, like, like anything else, it takes kids out of class. It's the, the logistics yeah. mm -hmm. of the yeah. permission slips and getting them over and getting them back. Yeah. Um, but if it was something that um, the community and the board felt was valuable for the community, um, we'd, fi we'd figure that out as long as it's optional. Yeah, it has to be optional. Yeah, I don't think we can force people to. Yeah, no, I wouldn't force anybody. I'm just using it as another data. No, force is isn't is the kind of word, but the right. insist. Yeah, to guess, Kevin. Yeah, just uh, just an example is, is, you know, we have seven different schools in the city, nine, and not them, what as I said, Jackson's zero. Pine Tree hasn't had a case since the beginning of school. John Fuller, Bartlett. Then you have Conway Elementary, and they have like nine cases in it weeks worth of time and it's not coming from in the school but there are a number of parents who are concerned enough that have shared you know I'd like to, to find out and, and try to control some of that so uh, there are two sides so it, it, it is consent by, by nature so and it's one thing I forgot to say is you can consent in and out of the program yeah. mm -hmm. so um, which I think would be the most tedious piece for our school nurse and Gail and I, you know, the family says, yeah, we're in this week, and then two weeks later, no, we're out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That logistic, because you got to take them off the roster and come on. But other than that, I think it's a beneficial tool. And I think the um, kids being sent home and the questions that we still have around, we don't call it quarantine anymore, but how many days out they have to be and, and all of that, um, I want to be really clear and understood um, if you get positive that's asymptomatic then you'd have to follow all right if you're positive then you have to self isolate based on the um, department of public health protocols. guidance yeah. and protocols mm -hmm. you don't have to test out to come back to school right, right. okay thank you Pam. thanks Pam. Anything else, Kevin? Don, I'm good. Most people have questions. Gail? Yeah. So we are, I won't say we're getting back to normal, but we're certainly doing a lot more of the things that make us Jackson. We're doing all school meetings together again. Uh, we're not inviting people from the outside. However, we are bringing all of the children together and, and activities we always did together as a whole school community. Um, and as Kevin mentioned, the K-1 has already gone out to the farm, and there's several trips being scheduled around our Tin Mountain program. The Tin Mountain program is up and running. And you may have, if you've been involved with any of the other town, the Conservation Committee, Mike Dufalo was awarded the grant that he applied for, which has the school collaborating with the Conservation Committee and the Department of Forestry in doing some monitoring activities of the Wildcats. So they provided the funding for that, and um, Tim Mountain is working with all of our students. We'll be going on various trips, either walking to the Wildcat or going up to the headwaters. It includes a two-night three-day um, experience similar to the Ferry Beach, but with just our, our sixth graders, so the fifth and sixth graders will go on an overnight um, as part of that grant um, through Tim Mountain. So we're very grateful to Mike Dufalo, who um, took his own time and initiative over the summer and, and wrote that up for us. Um, the after-school program has come back face-to-face -face in full swing. First day was today. They're doing pumpkin people, um, mm -hmm. as is our long-standing tradition. We'll have some pumpkin people out front at the end of this. Can I um, hire them? Can Cassie, the young woman who's running that program, um, is very, very creative. And she cooks well, too. She brings us treats when she comes. How so, often does the after-school program run? It's Monday and Wednesday afternoons after school. Until what time? Till 4 or 4.30, depending on the program. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. 
And we, um, as you can see, are starting soccer on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, and it will be a little different than we've done in the past. We won't be traveling around competing with other rec departments. However, we'll set, be setting up an intramural department uh, in here where the kids will play each other. It'll be mostly just fun games and activities. Um, the K-1 will have a group um, at the Triangle. The Snowflake has, again, graciously allowed us to use that field. And then the rest of the older kiddos will be over in the um, so field. Not the field, the field. I think that's really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we've got um, a number of folks volunteering to help out with that. Um, so it's beginning to feel a little bit more like the Jackson Grammar School that your children went through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, anything else? No. Well, thank you. Thank you. A lot of good stuff. All right. Um, Board member issues. Call issues. <laughs> uh, personnel committee. We had a we, we briefed you on that yeah. last time, but the minutes weren't um, oh, okay. done. But right. no, we, yeah. we have taken action on that, and we'll be getting back together prior to budget season yeah, okay. to address some of the concerns that were there. Great. Okay. Thank you. There was a policy meeting um, just the other day, so um, we didn't have enough to get to the meeting, uh, but there will be some new revised policy to approve next meeting. You know, yeah, we had a DEI meeting, but I have no idea who did notice. And we don't have minutes for that. Yeah. We need to, we need to get on that. <laughs> I was like, you and I, I what are you, it's either you or I who's running ship on that, but like maybe we need to, so. To make oh, sure somebody's we'll taking minutes. We'll get back to you on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I know I took some notes on the agenda in the drive, but I okay. didn't think to print them up and send them Yeah, up. maybe if you could put them together as minutes, that'd be great. Yeah, and then maybe in our agenda we need to clarify who's taking notes. We're trying to be a little bit more diplomatic and not have the same note taker, but this is the when that falls through, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the work is progressive, which is great. Um, and we started working with Carlos. Um, and Gail, did that, did the work, the work happen with the, with the staff, yes, right? on the teacher workshop day, he was here with us for, well, he was virtual, but he was here with us for two hours. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I attended the Whitney Center committee this past week. We were outside, Gail was there as well. Um, and Whitney Center continues to be used by um, some outside groups as well, going through the office of the school. And um, Katie Reardon uh, will to be a parent of children in uh, the school is the person that coordinates. Um, things are going smoothly with that. And we have strategic, as you all know, as you're going to be there tomorrow, mm -hmm. we have our strategic planning uh, listening post tomorrow. So that's been the committee's been. Well, that's in this room, right? Well, we're going to do it outside, but honestly, okay. yeah, I mean, that, that's what we've been planning on is doing it outside. Okay. Just to talk to people. Yeah. All right. Just so you show the right place. Yeah. Trust me, if you're here, you'll hear us out there. We're whooping and hollering, having so much fun. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Just one other item I forgot to mention, but it impacts your, your middle school students. So Bartlett made the determination to send soccer students because the numbers were so low, so they're participating down in camp middle school, along with football and field hockey. Uh, just oh, that's football. great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yes. Who's bus are they using? What's that? Who's bus are they using? Uh, I think they, they alternate <laughs> here. Here, here, back and forth. Barbara said earlier. I'm okay to use Jackson's too. Anything else? Yeah, keep moving, Jay. Yeah, the, um, I think that at our next meeting, maybe, or coming up soon, maybe October or November, we should probably send out an invitation for forming a committee to look into our high school options. Yeah. Um, and and if maybe ask for a committee to be made mm -hmm. and come up with ideas on what we want to task that committee with specifically. I know Kate's pretty fired up about that too, so yeah. I'll um, speak for her and say she uh, so like to lead that. <laughs> so just to, to put an invitation out for not now, but in October we'll put out an invitation out and maybe come up with ideas on what the task that committee specifically would. Okay. Yeah. You want me to put that under old business under the tuition contract? Yeah, that would yeah. be good. Yeah. We get it on the on the agenda for next. Okay. I have a question about the facilities committee. What's happening there with the next step? 
for the addition work um, and the planning? How's that going, Terry? You have Kate's on the I would love to have it. He texted me the policy meeting last week mm -hmm. and asked me what's going on with that. And I was supposed to email Jim and tell him to be a hold of that, and I didn't. So okay. I need to do that. As a I don't know, member emeritus or something like that. <laughs> the last part that we had left that, that community with, the next thing we were supposed to happen was that. Um, Mike was supposed to review with, with Gail and staff to make sure that the, everything that was in the plan so far is, is kind of what we wanted to do. Yeah. Um, if it took relabeling rooms and things like that, so I don't yeah. know whether that's occurred or not. Okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm mindful from the budget standpoint, right? That we have responsibilities that we need to meet, and just kind of how everything stacks up timeline wise. I mean, you and I do the budget committee, and you know, to move this forward. I'm on the budget committee. You and I. You and I. We can make it for six months. <laughs> I, can, I don't mind taking minutes, but five minutes are really easy to take. <laughs> budget committee met. I'm, not, I'm budget. sitting on my hands at the moment. <laughs> All right. My point being, I just want to make sure that, yes, yeah, no, no one's no, all the no. Right. Yep. If, if we're going to get that on the warrant for March, we, we need, need to, to yeah. we've done no, a fair amount of work that needs to be done. Yeah. 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 Um, the Thank numbers you. we got for construction today, not for the school, but for other things in town, are not a very happy number. So. I know. We went from three hundred eighty-five dollars a square foot building cost to six hundred twenty-five dollars oh, yeah. wow. a square foot building cost. So, um, They're supposed to be coming down now. The building cost, right? But the state did put what thirty million dollars into, I think, building in the budget. Not that they've given it to Jackson. But they might. Just for the number of I see our next board meeting. That just to be clear, we all come to the joint. Session. Correct. Right. Jackson. That's, yes. And that's here? No, that's also this week. Right. No, 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 that's a different That's yes, 29, 13, 20, 20. <laughs> That's different. I just keep showing up. Yeah. yeah. This Dark, week, we love after it. the 4 o'clock, there's something else. That's right. It's the joint SE 9 13. 9 and 13. Those but then this is about Bartlett and Jackson. This is just about Bartlett and just Jackson. And does Bartlett come into us or are we going there? Or we, they come. No, we go there. No. Which one? You have your meeting at six. Right. We go five. So there are five, five here. Yeah. Okay. And then when we start, we go there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And confirming. Yeah, but it's the same. So we'll be all masked inside. So. Yeah. Kevin, can you can you convey to Becky Jefferson just a warm, heartfelt yeah. thanks <laughs> from the Jackson School Board? Absolutely. <laughs> Find out what her favorite sandwich is. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe she came back. I think it's because she likes me. Yeah. It's good. She likes me. Wow. Well, she really cares about the mental health. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she, she takes care of that SAU. They're like family for her, and she doesn't want to see anybody not mm -hmm. do well. Right. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. All right, any other board discussion? No? Mm -hmm. No? No? Good? Okay. <laughs> uh, back to citizen comments. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. No non-public this evening, no. so we'll move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Jen, you're right. I get to go to dinner. Yep. Good luck. Yes. <laughs> Make those folks happy. Thanks, everyone.